All right, let's start with question one. Um, a student reacts 0.3 grams of methyl salicylate with a stoichiometric amount of a strong base. This product is then acidified to produce salicylic acid crystals. Uh, for, one, for every one mole of your methyl salicylate reactant, use one mole of salicylic acid crystals is produced. Calculate the maximum mass in grams of salicylic acid that can be produced in this reaction. All right, so we know that we have uh, 0.3 grams of your uh, methyl salicylate, CAHAO3. Um, and we know that for every one mole of this, you produce one mole of salicylic acid. So let's first ca uh, calculate how many moles this is. We know that the molar mass is uh, 152.15 grams per every one mole. Um, and we know that uh, every mole of this is going to produce one mole of salicylic acid. And in order to find the mass, let's multiply by the molar mass of uh, salicylic acid. So that is 15, sorry, 138.12 grams. And if you do out all the math, so 0.3 uh, divided by 152.15 times 138.12, that is 0 0.27 grams of salicylic acid. So HC7H5O3. Um, and that is your answer. Let's go on to question, uh, let's go on to part B, sorry. Uh, as, part of the, as part of the experimental procedure to purify the salicylic acid crystals after the reaction is complete, the crystals are filtered from the reaction mixture, rinsed with distilled water, and dried. Some physical properties of salicylic acid are given in the following table. That's your information. The student's experiment results in an 87% yield of dry salicylic acid. The student suggests that some of the salicylic acid crystals dissolved in the distilled water during the rinsing step. Is the student's claim consistent with the calculated percent yield value? Uh, justify your answer. Well, if you look at the solubility, there is a certain solubility. Uh, it's 2.2 grams per liter, which means that while you rinse it, some of that salicylic acid could have dissolved. And so that, that dissolved salicylic acid would not go into your percent yield. So it does make sense that your percent yield is less than 100. Um, so yes, the, the student's claim is consistent with the calculated percent yield. So the student's claim is consistent with the percent yield because salicylic acid is soluble in water, so it is reasonable that some of it dissolved, giving us a percent yield of less than 100%. Let's go on to C. Given the physical properties on the table, calculate the quantity of heat that must be absorbed to increase the temperature of a 0.105 gram sample of dry um, salicylic acid crystals from, tw from 25 degrees Celsius to the melting point of 159 Celsius and melt the crystals completely. So our total heat required is going to be the heat required to heat up the, uh, the sample. So let's say that is Q heat um, plus the heat required to melt the crystal. Um, so let's say that's Q melt. So Q heat is kind of easy. Q heat is going to be MC delta T. So that's your mass of the sample. That's your specific heat. And that's the change in temperature. Your mass is 0.105 grams. Your specific heat uh, is given in your table. It is 1.17, uh, so 1.17 joules per grams times degrees Celsius uh, times your change in temperature. So that's going to be 159 minus 25, so 134 degrees Celsius. And if we do out the math, uh, 0.105 times 1.17 times 134 that is about 16.5 joules now let's do our Q melt so the amount uh, required to melt it is going to be based on your heat of fusion your heat of fusion tells you that you need 27.1 kilojoules of energy per every mole that you melt so how many how many moles do we have uh, we have 0 0.105 grams Let's turn that into moles, so divide by the molar mass, which is 138.12 uh, per one mole. And we know that one mole uh, requires 27.1 kilojoules. So how many joules is that? So 0.105 uh, divided by 138.12 times 27.1. This number is in kilojoules, so let's uh, convert that to joules by uh, multiplying by a thousand 
that is 20.6 joules. So your total heat is going to be 16.5 joules plus 20.6 joules, which comes out to 37.1 joules. Uh, and that is your answer. Let's go on to D. The structures and melting points for methyl salicylate and salicylic acid are shown. Uh, the, the same three types of intermolecular forces, London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole interactions, and hydrogen bonding exist among molecules of each substance. Uh, explain why the melting point of salicylic acid is higher than that of methyl salicylate. If you remember, methyl salicylate actually has a higher molar mass than salicylic acid. And so since it has a higher molar mass, you would expect uh, more London dispersion forces, which should mean more uh, better intermolecular, intermolecular forces, meaning a higher melting point. But that's not the case. In fact, their melting points are vastly different. To explain this, we have to look at the other types of intermolecular forces, uh, in specific uh, hydrogen bonding. If you look at methyl salicylate, there's only one domain uh, for hydrogen bonding. It's this OH single bond um, that can form hydrogen bonds. If you look at this OC bond, that can't form hydrogen bonds because uh, that's a, a carbon instead of a hydrogen. But if you look at salicylic acid, it has one, two domains for um, hydrogen bonding. Since salicylic acid has more domains for hydrogen bonding, it's going to have stronger intermolecular forces, which explains the higher melting point. And yes, one one uh, hydrogen one more domain for hydrogen bonding can make such a big difference in melting point. Hydrogen bonding is a very strong form of intermolecular force. So salicylic acid has more domains for hydrogen bonding, which means it experiences more intermolecular forces. Therefore, its melting point is higher. All right, let's go on to part E. A student titrates 20 mL of 0.01 molar uh, salicylic acid with 0.02 molar sodium hydroxide using a probe to monitor the pH of the solution. The data are plotted producing the following titration curve. Um, e. Using the information in the graph, estimate the pKa of salicylic acid. The pKa is going to be the pH at your half equivalence point. So the equivalence point is where you have this drastic jump. Um, and so your half your equivalence point is at 10 mils. Your half equivalence point is half of that. So it's going to be at 5 mils. And the pH at 5 mils is about 3. So the pKa is about 3. Let's go to F. When the pH of the titration mixture is 4, is there a higher concentration of the weak acid or the, its conjugate base in the flask? Um, if you look at the pH at, when it's 4, 4 is past the half equivalence point. So why is that important? Well, if you look at the chemical significance of the half equivalence point, that is when your acid, the uh, concentration of your acid is equal to the concentration of your conjugate base. Um, so at the half equivalence point. Um, but since this is past your half equivalence point, what that means is that more sodium hydroxide has been added, um, which reacts with the acid uh, to produce more of your conjugate base. So at, uh, at, at a pH of 4, your, the concentration of your conjugate base is going to be higher than the concentration of your acid. So since the pH is past uh, the pH at your half equivalence point, um, that means you have more conjugate base than you do conjugate acid. Let's go on to G. The student researches benzoic acid and finds that it has similar properties to salicylic acid. Uh, the Ka for benzoic acid is 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. Calculate the value of pKa for benzoic acid. pKa has a really simple formula. It's the negative log of Ka. Um, in fact, like any P uh, thing is going to have a similar um, formula. So pH is the negative log of your H plus and pOH is the negative log of your hydroxide concentration. So pKa negative log of Ka. Uh, let's just calculate that. So pKa is the negative log of 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. Uh, so let's do that negative log of 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. Um, so your pKa is about 4.2. All right, 
Last part, uh, the student performs a second titration, this time titrating 20 ml of a 0.01 molar benzoic acid solution with 0.02 molar sodium hydroxide. Sketch the curve that would result from this titration of benzoic acid on the following graph, which already shows the original curve from the titration of 20 ml of 0.01 molar uh, salicylic acid. The initial pH of the benzoic acid solution is 3.11. So benzoic acid is really similar to salicylic acid, which means the shape of this curve is not going to be very different. We are going to have two differences. First of all, the initial pH is 3.11. So uh, when zero, zero mils of sodium hydroxide have been added, your pH is going to be 3.11. You also know one other thing. You know that the pKa of benzoic acid is 4.2. So at your half equivalence point uh, at 5 mils, your uh, pH is going to be 4.2. So you have those two points, and those two points are basically the only thing different. So if you draw out the curve, um, it's still gonna have the same equivalence point because they are similar, and the rest of the shape is going to be the same because benzoic acid is very similar to salicylic acid. So your, your graph, your titration graph would look something like this for benzoic acid. The two differences, are uh, a different initial pH and your pKa is different. But once you reach the equivalence point, it's basically the same. All right, that was question one. Thank you for watching. Um, there should be a playlist with all the other questions on this test. Um, again, thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Peace.